good morning. Thanks for having me here. As Professor Millian mentioned, the debater was unable to come here. Uh, he sent his greetings to all of you, and uh, as part of the project, uh, we will be in Bahrain again um, on March, so I think he will be welcoming you at that time. Uh, today, I will be delivering this uh, speech, Architecting Internet of Things, Based Agri-Food Systems. As I have mentioned, I'm working for Wageningen University of Research in the Netherlands. Uh, I'm a part of a member of Information Technology Group. Um, so in 20 minutes, I'm going to share what we have done recently as part of our ongoing research on uh, architecting Internet of Things. I'll try to simplify, uh, present uh, the basic concepts first and then continue with the, uh, the technical issues regarding the computer software engineering. So let's uh, look at back 55 years. Maybe most of us uh, were not born at that time. But if you are over 55, yeah. yeah. If you are over 55, probably, uh, yeah, you know IBM mainframes, uh, 370. These are very huge computers. As you see, we have now iPhones, Samsung uh, smartphones. I mean, they are even faster. If you look at the 55 years back, uh, you, you can see Apollo 11 common com uh, <coughs> module. And it had, uh, it had only 64 kilobytes of memory. And it operated at uh, 0.043 megahertz. So this is an iPhone 11. As you know, uh, it's quite faster. Uh, 2.66 gigahertz. We are talking about two uh, cores and four low power cores, 1.82. So it is uh, 10 times, 1,000 times faster than Apollo 11. So in 50, uh, 50 years, many things have changed. And it has 4 gigabytes of memory, so quite large and it's very small. So if you look at these uh, two examples, you see that the computing power uh, is changing dramatically. We, it's cheaper, of course. iPhone is not cheaper. But if you compare to Apollo, the expenses that the NASA has Spend at the time it's uh, cheaper, it's getting cheaper, and it's more powerful. If you think of the memory or more storage, uh, these systems are more powerful. And uh, they are smaller, you can easily carry them. It's not large. And uh, if you look at the systems around, you see a lot of sensors, right? Uh, these devices can be programmed, and some of them are commercial off the shelf, you can buy them easily. So more things are uh, connected. Uh, if you look at the public infrastructure, business, healthcare applications, you can see many, many things are now connected. Also, as human beings, people or people are also connecting to the things. Okay, if you have uh, some motion sensors, electro, electro uh, cardiogram sensor, this data can be transferred to uh, cloud, public cloud, private cloud. So a lot of uh, information can be gathered and we can discover new knowledge from this human future amount of data. We are talking about big data, of course. Things are also connected uh, to the other things. If you think of um, autonomous vehicle, for instance, we have a lot of independent systems. Uh, we can call this a complex system. So you can think of fuel or uh, maintenance of these systems. So we have complex systems. So uh, after 10 years or 50 years, let's say, we will be dealing, uh, we will see uh, around a lot of uh, unmanned uh, vehicle, vehicles, autonomous cars, and the security will be more and more important because remote diagnostic, there are a lot of uh, smart subsystems which are related to these uh, uh, complex cars. So we are talking about Internet of Things, 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 things. So what is thing? I, I would like to present our point of view. So thing is like an object of the physical world. Most of the time it's a, it's a physical uh, uh, object or uh, uh, an object of the information world. We call it the virtual things. And these objects are capable of being identified and integrated into the networks, communication. This is the definition of International Telecommunication Union, which was defined in 2050. So can we turn every object into a thing? Yes, it is possible. This, uh, uh, in practice uh, and in theory, this is possible. You can turn almost every object into a thing. So a thing is like an embedded system. It's not different than the refrigerator or washing machine in your uh, home. Any uh, home appliances can be considered like a, a thing. 
and it consists of four main parts. The first part is sensors and actuators. I'm going to explain what it means. Sensors are basically used to get sense the system, to get some data from the uh, around, and the actuators are used to respond uh, to the environment. So we also have microcontrollers, which is a program in uh, different languages, like a C programming language or low-level programming language, assembly programming language, for instance. And we have, of course, communication unit to, to transfer the data to communicate with the other uh, uh, components and, and this is the power supply of course is important and it should be uh, consuming low energy so when we say a thing we should uh, be able to describe these four main components sensors actuators microcontroller communication unit and power supply so in this slide you see the sensors they are the input components as you see they can uh, uh, sense and collect surrounding inform information actuators alter the environment, the surrounding, for instance, any lighting or uh, heating or uh, displaying some message on the screen. We can use also some motors like pneumatic hydraulic motors uh, as the actuators. If you look at the Internet of Things uh, uh, connected devices, and uh, if you compare it with the last 10 years, it is fivefold uh, more. So in the, after five years, we expect 75 billion, 75 billion uh, Internet of Things devices. And the, unfortunately, some of them are vulnerable to attacks because people are still using the default passwords, etc. You can see a very simple password like admin, admin, for instance, are widely used. You cannot imagine how people are using these default passwords. And uh, we, we have seen, uh, I think, three years ago, this kind of uh, distributed Daniel of service attack, uh, cyber attack. And people have some uh, hackers use these kind of uh, Internet of Things devices to stop uh, some of the servers. So this will be more and more important. As you see, it will increase dramatically. And uh, 75 billion is a lot of number. So what is Internet of Things? We have defined it thing. When we say Internet of Things, we mean the network of objects or things which are embedded with electronics, software, sensors, and network connectivity. So we will be able to collect and exchange the data. So if you think of the agriculture, the land, you can collect huge amount of data by using the Internet of Things te technology. After a few slides, I'm going to show some case studies which uh, you can use or people have used Internet of Things. So the basic uh, definition uh, or a simple formula can be like this, I, uh, uh, Internet of Things is a set of physical objects which have controller, sensor, actuators, and of course internet. We are dependent on internet. And this is the definition of Mike Ewan and Kazimeli. Uh, internet of Things is not uh, totally new. Uh, if you uh, go back 1994, we had RFID-based systems, and in, in early 2000, we have, uh, uh, we have been using wireless sensor networks, still they are used, and meet 2000, we started to use smart devices, and then uh, we were talking about the cyber physical systems still <coughs> valid, and nowadays we are talking about <coughs> Internet of Things, because uh, uh, we have a lot of billions of uh, uh, IoT devices, as we mentioned. You can see a lot of documents, you can see how you can develop uh, some simple applications or complex applications, but uh, the, the most important thing here is the methodology. What kind of a methodology can be used to develop a robust Internet of Things. So that, that, that was the, the, uh, our research, how we can develop these kind of systems. We have looked at several uh, papers published so far, but we also propose a new one. But before I, I introduce our methodology, I would like to show uh, use cases for the people who are working in agriculture domain. The first one is, of course, monitoring of uh, climate uh, uh, conditions. I think uh, in the first presentation it was discussed a bit about weather stations that uh, might be the first use case of IoT. Of course, greenhouse automation. Uh, in the Netherlands, a lot of, uh, <coughs> you can see greenhouses, which are uh, uh, very innovative, I should say. And uh, the third application might be crop management. Uh, fourth one is uh, cattle uh, monitoring, and the fifth uh, one is farm management system. These are some of the use cases in agriculture domain, but of course, you can list many uh, uh, use cases, other use cases. These are some of the simple ones. So this uh, shows, uh, this is actually from National Geographic, which was published, uh, the issue was published in 2017, in July, I guess. 
So it was, it was mentioning about the Netherlands, this tiny country, it's a small country, but it is the second largest exporter of food. So how can this be possible? Uh, and the crops are growing around the clock, as you can see, all days, all nights, uh, 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 these uh, crops are being grown. Even in the, uh, uh, you can see some farms on top of a former factory, this is in the Den Haag. Uh, you can see a former factory and on the top uh, you can see a greenhouse uh, which is quite interesting I think. So how did they manage this? How did they produce this kind of uh, or huge amount of uh, uh, food? Because they are using the technology, they are using the ICT that is the main topic of our uh, project in this uh, conference also. They are using sensors as I have mentioned, they are using carbon, uh, they are monitoring a lot of uh, uh, if, uh, data like carbon dioxide level, uh, humidity, lead light, plant health, and of course they are using data analytics, they are processing the data, they want to change every day if they are coming with an innovative idea, right? The farmers are not stopping every day, they want to change how they are doing the things, so they want to improve every day, they want to improve so that uh, nowadays they are harvesting 10 times than the average yield. So this is a, a huge difference compared to traditional approaches, they are uh, using innovative approaches. So if you look at the IoT landscape, if you want to start a new project on IoT, you can see a lot of uh, services, industry solutions. So it's quite complicated. If you want to build a robust system, uh, you have to look at a lot of uh, uh, components, services, infrastructures. So it's quite complicated. So what we offer here is the use of uh, software engineering, again, unified modeling language, which is uh, commonly used in software engineering. It's actually a graphical language for visualizing, specifying, constructing, and documenting the artifacts of any software system. And uh, we looked at the, the, the available IoT modeling abstractions. There were not many uh, approaches. And we also looked back the software development methods, which have been uh, developed within the last uh, 20 years. Uh, we have seen 32 methods emerge in the last 20 years. Some of them are agile approaches, which are quite common. Not only uh, they are for IoT, but also for other uh, software applications. So we, we looked at what are the available IoT methods. We looked at the literature, uh, what the, the practitioners, researchers have done within the last 10 years. We have uh, come across uh, with these six uh, techniques, uh, six methodologies. One of them is IGNET IoT methodology, another one is uh, the IoT methodology of Colmes. So we have uh, listed all of them. As you can see, some of them are from academia, some of them from industry, and uh, some of them are focusing specific approaches like multi-agent systems. They are using agent systems, and you can see uh, the link evaluation framework, uh, which was published by Professor Tekin Erdogan. Evaluation framework characterizing IoT system development methods. And uh, in this slide, you see the artifacts which must be produced as part of this methodology. If you select, for instance, IGNET, then you have to prepare site survey, solution sketch. So these are very interesting. We like them, but they were not very systematic, I should say. So we tried to come up with a systematic approach. So because uh, we are a software engineering group, data analytics group, we are looking at uh, a higher level. So we wish to see how we can design these systems from software architectural perspective. So I, I, would, I would like to talk a bit about architecture modeling. Uh, by the way, if I uh, exceed the time limit, please remind me. Uh, architecture modeling, this is the basic IoT reference architecture. If you look at the several articles, everybody's talking about this reference architecture. When we say reference architecture, it's not restricted to one domain, right? You can apply this. Uh, architecture in many domains. So we can start with the uh, device level, uh, uh, device layer. Uh, device layer addresses the sensor and physical devices. Basically, we are gathering the data from the sensors. Uh, the second important layer is, of course, network layer. We are talking about the, uh, the network connectivity, transporting the data across uh, these layers. And the third one is session layer. Of course, uh, you need a session uh, uh, to set up the IoT connection points, that is uh, the third uh, layer. Uh, fourth layer is application layer. Uh, we are addressing different IoT services. 
so I, the application layer contains IoT services. As you can see, this is like, like a layered uh, architecture style from a software architecture perspective. Uh, we should also define the business logics, the workflow, which is addressed in business layer. So as you can see, it's not dependent on one domain. It's, uh, gen it can be used any domain, this uh, reference architecture. Of course, we have some horizontal layers like security layer, which addresses the security aspects, and the management layer, which is about supporting capabilities like traffic or congestion management, if you think of the network traffic. So this was the uh, reference architecture, but it's still uh, quite abstract, right? If you want to apply, for instance, if you want to select a particular protocol for IoT, how would you select that protocol, right? So you have to have a better uh, 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 methodology, I should say. For instance, uh, let's say we want to use session layer, but how can I select the protocol? Should I use MTTQ or other available protocols? How can I do that? So that was the idea of our research. Uh, I'm going to share how we've done it, uh, but first I would like to talk a bit about software architecture, uh, which is the main re research topic of our group also. When we say software architecture, that is the fundamental organization of a system. When we say software architecture, we are talking about the components, we are talking about the connectors, that means the communication, how do you communicate between components, and the third one is principles, architecture styles, for instance. So uh, software architecture is the fundamental organization of this system and every software system has an architecture. Sometimes you can have a very small scale software uh, system, but it, is st it has still uh, have a software architecture. And of course we have different stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders are individuals or teams or organizations which have a common interest with the system. And sometimes uh, the interest uh, those uh, interests of stakeholders can be contradictory and as the software architect you're responsible to resolve these problems. And uh, as you can see these architectural drivers will be handled by the software architect and then we will come up with a good software architecture so that the system is maintainable and extensible. Uh, if you look at the architecting uh, of a, a house like this, uh, you, you already know that they, they are. there are floor plans, interior plans, wiring plans. In a similar way, in the software architecture, we have different viewpoints. So by looking at these viewpoints, you can uh, draw some waves. So we represent, for instance, if, if this is the deployment view which uh, we use for software architecture. And uh, you should select coherent set of viewpoints. We call them architecture framework. There are a lot of books like software architecture, software system architecture, where you can see uh, the, you can select a particular architecture framework. We use the Carnegie Mellon University Software Engine, uh, Carnegie Mellon University Software Engineering Institute, uh, views and beyond architecture framework. In this uh, link, you can see 70 architecture frameworks, and this uh, shows us one of them, views and beyond approach. Uh, but I will not give all the details. So as I have mentioned, uh, this. Reference architecture can be used in many domains, and uh, we call it uh, application architecture. So this reference architecture can be used in different domains, and then you can come up with different application architecture. But how do you do that? Uh, we use feature-oriented domain modeling, which is uh, about the feature models. You have to determine the common and variable feature of products, and of course, the dependencies. So we use this in notation. Uh, we should determine the mandatory features, optional features, and then, uh, yeah, we list all the features that we can select. A feature is like a property of a concept uh, of a domain model, for instance, for farm management uh, information systems. There are, of course, different features, but uh, as your, for your application, you can select particular features. Not all the features are uh, valid for your application, of course. And then uh, we come up with uh, these kind of feature diagrams, <laughs> which are uh, consisting of a set of nodes, a set of directed edges, uh, for uh, IoT, we have done this. We have uh, represented the top level features, and then uh, for, for we have looked at session layer. In the session layer, you can see protocol types. We have uh, determined five. We have done a domain analysis. We have looked at all the papers, all the uh, available tools, and we come up uh, with five protocol types and source targets, transport type, architecture have been de determined. So you have to determine which features you should select. For this purpose, we have uh, 
uh, listed some criteria. Uh, let's say we want to select some of these protocols and, uh, for instance, um, license. What is the license level of the communication pro uh, protocol security? What is the adopted security protocol? So we, we have set all the available answers. We have come up with this table. So if, uh, for instance, you want to use request reply software architecture, of course, you have to use call app uh, protocol. If you want to use publish subscribe, you have four options. This was uh, the adopted criteria for selecting the communication protocol. As I have shown you, this uh, starts with domain modeling. We have uh, prepared the feature models, and then we prepared this table. This is the approach, and uh, this uh, predefined criteria can be used to select the proper communication protocol based on your project requirements, and then the practitioner <coughs> might select the feasible protocol. If there is more than one feasible, of course, you should look at non-functional requirements as well and you can extend the number of protocols as well as the evaluation criteria. We have done this for farm management information system. Since uh, I have no more time, I will uh, try to show the results. But of course, uh, you can read the whole article how we have uh, designed this approach. This shows the farm management information system feature model. This shows how we integrated it with IoT concepts. This is the IoT-based farm information systems. You can uh, uh, also look at the reference architecture for IoT-based farm. This is the composition view which shows all the available components uh, for an IoT-based farm system. But for your application, you can select some of them. You are not, uh, for instance, uh, if you are not dealing with soil sensing or light sensing, you can remove them. And this is the layer view which shows, uh, which is, uh, 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 which shows all the details of application layer, data acquisition layer, business layer. Or, uh, here you see the deployment view. Deployment view is about uh, how you deploy the software across hardware entities. We have different hardware entities, but how do you deploy your software? This was uh, the deployment view, and as I have mentioned, from a particular reference architecture, you have to select uh, uh, application architecture. You have to select, as you see here, some of the components because you don't. Sometimes you don't need all the components, so we select some of them and sometimes we have to customize some of these components. So these are all about the software architecture, software concepts, but we applied all of these concepts uh, um, uh, in this domain. So we also performed two case studies, and uh, you can read all of these case studies. One of them is from Netherlands, one of them is from Turkey. Uh, then the conclusion comes. Um, if you look at the literature, reference architecture for, uh, for IoT have been provi provided by different studies, but still we need concrete steps to the, derive the application architectures because they were either implicit, they were either not existing. And then uh, in this uh, paper we have showed, uh, shown that commonality and variability analysis, analysis with the help of feature models and reference architectures and of overall product line, software product line engineering approaches can be adopted to cope with the variability in this scope. So if you want to get more information about this uh, 20 minutes was uh, too less, I should say, but I tried to uh, explain first basic concepts and then I continue with the approaches that we introduced. So you can read, this is, This was published this year in the Precision Agriculture Journal with one of our uh, PhD students in Information Technology Group and also Professor Bedir Tekinardogan. And this paper also uh, featured driven domain analysis of session layer protocols of Internet of Things was uh, presented in Hawaii uh, during the International Congress on Internet of Things. Thank you very much. If you have any questions.